Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. And this is what, episode 130, getting up there. And I want to welcome you guys to the show. I want to remind you that uh, some of the intros we have at the beginning of the show is also designed to fit on our YouTube channel. So you can find a YouTube channel version of the show <clears throat> or listen to us on Spreaker or catch us on Good Talk Radio uh, or <laughs> just listen to the podcast. If you have podcast software, you'll find us in all the available podcast places, platforms like uh, uh, TuneIn and uh, iTunes and iHeartRadio and all over the place. And so, yeah, and uh, of course, we have an interesting subject to talk about. Uh, it's based off of some information that came off of the website or channel. Um, uh, what the heck is it called? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Little House on the Road. And the gentleman that does the show, his name is Rob also. And uh, we'll talk about... Uh, <laughs> Some of his interesting findings, but I also wanted to review a little bit of, uh, oh, some dumb things I did, I guess, uh, when it comes to uh, my RV. So uh, if you caught some of our videos, you probably saw a review of what uh, was uh, going on. But, you know, we keep our RV up in uh, central Oregon. So we went up and uh, had a great trip. We went up to Idaho first, go visit family, then shot over to Bend, Oregon area where we keep our RV. And uh, um, our RV's been there for about a year and a half now. Um, well, first is free sh uh, <laughs> free storage, and two, uh, it's a nice to have it there because Sherry's folks are getting up in age, and it's nice to know we can shoot up there really quick, either drive or fly, and have a place to stay right on the property. And uh, you guys, I also have mentioned to you that I have a solar system, a real light one. I, have, you know, I run an 85 uh, watt um, panel up above that does a trickle charge to my batteries. And even when I shut off the master power, it overrides it and keeps my batteries charged up. Because when I first bought that thing, I'd store it. Something always drained the battery and I had to jump start my fifth wheel, which was really weird. So anyway... Uh, never had trouble since then. <clears throat> However, uh, when you're trickle charging for long periods of time, uh, I learned the hard way. You should check the water in your batteries a little more often. Now, I did check them maybe a year and a half ago. But anyway, when we got up there and I went to fire up the uh, uh, generator to kind of get everything fully charged before we kind of opened the slides and all that stuff, it was dead, and I had to jump it with my truck, and then I got it running, and I noticed that the batteries were not holding the power that we were charging into it. So I went in there, opened up the little compartment, looked inside the batteries, and I see caves. <laughs> I opened those up, as like, I don't see water in there at all. So I didn't have a choice. I did not have distilled water, so I just grabbed whatever I could out of desperate, because I knew exactly... What I might have just done, and I poured water in there, and I pulled a lot of water in those things. They were bone dry. <clears throat> Needless to say, after I filled them up and then tried to charge them again, and they were a little better, but they were gone, I ended up having to go to Les Schwab and buy new 6-volt batteries. I had two um, deep cells, and of course, they're about 150 bucks a piece, and luckily in Oregon, you don't have sales tax. So that's one of the advantages of getting high ticket items in Oregon. So lesson learned, guys. Please check your batteries more often. Now it's easy, you know, uh, easy to 
don't practice practice what I preach, not what I do. Is, is that what, how it goes? So, uh, uh, yeah, when's the last time you checked the water levels in your batteries? And then, of course, if you add water to them, use distilled water. Um, anyway, um, make it happen, people. And, of course, uh, the other thing I need the, on the way home we uh, drove from Central Oregon down to Fallon, spent the night at the little casino there, uh, which has rooms which uh, we like because we can uh, have Cinder, our dog, they're pet friendly. So I go in to buy dinner, and I was going to bring it to the room, so while you wait for dinner, you can play you know, a slot machine or something. And my wife comes running in, someone's hit your truck, someone's hit your truck, and it's like, what? <laughs> in the parking lot? And sure neck. Uh, of course, we have a video showing uh, what happened to us on that. So someone was trying to make a corner, caught the corner of my dually, which is the fiberglass uh, fender in the back, and uh, cr um, smacked it pretty good. And, uh, you know, uh, make this sh uh, long story short, uh, the people were a little shook up. I did not get upset. Um, anyway, they had insurance. Uh, we took pictures. We just kind of got it all sorted and the situation they put him in as far as maneuvering an rv around this corner of this building um was quite challenging so anyway uh, uh since i've been home th their insurance has contacted me they've sent me money uh did it i took it over for estimate they sent the funds it's going in uh, in a couple of days to have it repaired everything went smooth they're going to get me a rental why i don't have a vehicle um, I that was a perfect scenario. I unfortunately, I mean, not getting in a wreck in the first place would have been nice, but yeah, it worked out good. So having insurance and doing things right really makes all the difference. Well, here we go. So Rob, his name is uh, on a Little House on the Road, uh, was doing a little bit of definition shopping. And I found it quite interesting. And two words that he was defining when I uh, actually looked them up was the word nomad. Nomad, for example, means to wonder or wondering. And homeless means a person that does not have a residence, a permanent affixed home, like a, a apartment, a house, whatever. So I find that kind of interesting. So, uh, you can have a million dollar motorhome and be homeless. You could have uh, a run down RV and be homeless. You could have oh, in the middle kind of RV and be homeless. And no matter what, <laughs> whether you're homeless or not homeless, you could own a house and also be RVing. You could be a nomad. So, nomads can own houses. Nomads could have a base, which I, I guess that's reasonable to think of. Um, however, anyone that does not own a residence or rent a residence is homeless. So, all you full-timers out there that sold your houses and have no mortgage and stuff, you're homeless you're totally homeless. You're a homeless person in the United States. You're defined by the United States as homeless. And not only that, you're a homeless nomad if you're traveling around. Now, there's other situations where this wrong guy brought it up that you could be homeless but not be a nomad. For example, people call themselves homeless nomad yet they kind of stay at the same area all the time or the same kind of little routine um, they stay in all just blm in a certain area is that nomad can you call yourself a nomad if you're just doing that i guess that's wondering a little bit so it was kind of interesting to think about that i don't have really anything to say good or bad or indifferent about it but, you know, think about it. <clears throat> if you went to California, they're setting up a lot of great programs to help the homeless. 
Would you qualify even though you're driving a half million dollar machine or something like that? Could you get like free shelter, free food, maybe uh, uh, medical or something because you're homeless, you have no residence? Could you qualify for special programs throughout the United States for the homeless because you're homeless? Just maybe you could get some free medical, free dental because the definition of homeless is a person without a residence. No, just having your address registered at some place does not count. You physically do not have a, a residence that you're paying property taxes on or whatever. Um, you're, you're homeless. Face it. You're homeless. <laughs> I was homeless for quite a while then too, I guess. <laughs> It's just kind of odd to think about. <laughs> um, I mean, it's not a funny matter for those who truly what we think of as homeless. Uh, but for a lot of people that we wouldn't think to give them the label of homeless are homeless. Even if you're tired and have a pension and have um, Social Security coming and all that stuff, you're homeless. I don't care how you look at it. You can play with words and you can say I'm not and I choose to live this way. The bottom line is you're homeless. Good, bad, or indifferent, you're homeless. Fight it all you want. <laughs> you're homeless. Now feel free to leave comments <laughs> down below. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you're going to say we're full of crap or whatever. I'm just going by definitions. And so is this other guy. Uh, I'm actually just quoting Ro the Rob dude from a uh, 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 house on the road type, low house on the road. <laughs> can't, can't ever remember his channel. <laughs> and he looked them up, and you know he is he um, he's a nomad. Uh, well, calls himself a nomad, a wanderer. I think he said he owns some kind of base, so he can't really call himself homeless. But if a lot of people assume if you're driving around in a van or something like that, that you're homeless and uh, nomad to them just means more gypsy. You're roaming, you're wondering. So I thought that was kind of interesting to think about food for thought. <laughs> All you homeless people out there, even you probably make more money than I do for sure. You're homeless. You're a homeless nomad if you're driving around, moving around. If you're not moving around, you're not. If you're not wondering, you're not a nomad. You homeless non-nomad Jew. <laughs> anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Kind of play with words here a little bit. But yeah, when I grow up, I want to be a homeless nomad. <laughs> I think they're teaching that in the colleges now. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. Do check out um, Ford Refrigeration. Uh, excellent programs. Uh, those of you who might want to learn uh, and get certified in refrigeration for RVs, um, well, it's going to be some good extra income for you guys, especially if you're wondering. <laughs> so anyway, 
I wanted to confess a new problem I'm having. It's an addiction. It is. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting very concerned about because it it's addicted. It's actually keeping me, it's giving me nightmares. It's actually causing me to lose sleep. And that addiction is, are you ready? I hope you're sitting down because this is serious. And I never thought, I've told my kids, I never would have this happen to me. I promised them. I was like, this is ridiculous. There's no way. But it's happened. I am addicted to The Walking Dead. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Am I addicted? So for years, I've kind of like, I'm not watching stupid zombie shows and stuff. That's ridiculous. So finally, I don't know what it was. It's like we were watching, we were on Netflix, and we saw that they have the episodes. And I was like, here's episode one. It's like, Sherry, let's let's see what's so appealing about this show. Everybody's watching it, you know. So we started episode one, number one, started playing it. And it's like, well, that was kind of intriguing. So we watched another one. Oh, it's a little more intriguing. And, of course, I'm in the prepping, <clears throat> so you always kind of wonder what it would be like in an apocalyptic kind of lifestyle. And it wasn't so much as a zombie thing other than that. That um, <laughs> they definitely have uh, graphics that are kind of like uh, that's a little too real. Thank you very much, but okay. Anyway, so we I just to let you know we're up to episode. We're in season seven, right at the beginning of that. I can't believe we've been. I mean, li literally, whenever we have a chance, we try to watch The Walking Dead. <laughs> it's like I, I can't believe that. And apparently there's another series out there that's uh, going. It's over on Hulu. Um, it's like, really? I can't get through this one. So, because I think they're up to episode, I mean, season 10 now. And we're still hanging out at 7. We're working our way there. Don't want to get too off, uh, do it too fast or we won't have anything to watch. But uh, what an intriguing show. Very violent. But, um, and then... Uh, Boy, they, they, they definitely throw some surprises at you. And um, if you wanted to kind of comprehend what people and what things might be like after if society broke down, that's definitely a show to watch. <laughs> whether I mean, whether it play out the way it, it, it would, you know, does on that show, I don't know. But um, wow. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know how to get over this addiction other than is keep watching till it's all over. <laughs> but I guess I'd rather be addicted to The Walking Dead than actually be addicted to something worse than that. Like Oprah. Dog waste is never fun to deal with. You should always be using a quality dog waste bag. They should be strong, leak proof, and have easy tie handles. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags is that bag. Eco-friendly, lemon-scented, easy to use every time. Ranger Rob Poopy Bags come in a two-month supply in sheets and in rolls. Hop over to Amazon.com right now and get your cost-effective Ranger Rob Poopy Bags today. Stop using low-quality, cheap dog waste bags when you now have the option for Ranger Rob poopy bags. We love and care about you and your pets. Yes siree Bob, Ranger Rob poopy bags. We uh, appreciate you guys trying those out. Uh, you can get them on Amazon or free shipping. Uh, just type in Ranger Rob poopy bags and we have uh, three different models. You can get them in sheets or in rolls and you can get refills and we have a great little dispenser that comes with the rolls. So, uh, speaking of Bob, <laughs> how's Mr. Wells doing? Well, I haven't caught a lot of his shows because it, it just drives me crazy. But I noticed that his little thumbnails are getting like closer close-ups of his face. Uh, that real true Santa Claus look. And uh, I, I, he's getting very bold with his, with his you know, uh, he's posing. Definitely a posing kind of guy. And, it, and by the way... <clears throat> 
if he's giving out free money, then all you homeless RVers, nomadic homeless people, should qualify. So run over to Bob Wells today, head over to Cheap RV Living, and put in an application. Hey, free money is free money. It doesn't matter how well to do you are. If you need some free money, it's there for you. Because Bob cares. <laughs> he does. He loves you. And he's willing to give you money. Go for it. Tell him what you want. Tell Bob Wells what you want. <laughs> I know, Rob. You got to back off. Give the give the guy a break. <laughs> okay, I'll back off. But do tell him what you want. Want to do a, a shout out for uh, Papa Drew. Uh, he's working really hard on his channel. Uh, a new RVer with a new. He's got a nice uh, little Papa Drew uh, RV group. Uh, he's working really hard to get his group built up. Uh, has a YouTube channel, I believe, and uh, uh, trying some experimental ideas and stuff for his uh, RV channel. Uh, he also has does a lot of drone footage, and uh, I really appreciate seeing somebody working hard trying to find his niche. And uh, so uh, I really I want to send John over to Papa Drews and, and go check out. Uh, it literally is Papa Drews and his RV group. Uh, yeah, go look him up and uh, get connected and watch him grow. It's kind of funny. I get a lot of people who like join our channel and go way back years ago, you know, and watch how the channel grows. And uh, he's going to be one of those guys. So give him give him a chance. Uh, give him a give him a subscription and um, uh, check uh, join his group. Uh, looks like a fun group, and uh, I think he's going to have a really fun channel. And uh, with your help and everybody else, uh, uh, help develop him and, and, t and take his niche the way he wants it to go. So, yeah, Papa Drew, check him out. So, apparently, uh, what's the heck, uh, uh, Dan and Jen Nevada, uh, I haven't watched their show. I just saw their thumbnail, are having trouble with mice. And I, too, am fighting the mouse battle now at least they live in their rv and they can uh work the problem daily but uh <laughs> mine is uh why i'm gone so while we're gone um and we my rv was sat for like 10 months uh it looks like we got one mouse that got inside the actual cabin area which wasn't too bad and uh there's just no food to be found in there that we just made that for sure um but one of the researches I've done, if you go onto YouTube, is uh, they did some tests with, uh, they, they get a box and they put a camera over the top. And, uh, you know, they put a uh, camera over the top and they put it in like a barn where there's tons of mice. Put food in there and then videotaped it showing how they're coming in and out stealing food. Uh, you know, dozens of mice. Uh, same area, put a box up and put mint. Yes, mint. Uh, in the box and they literally would come to the box uh, you know it's kind of a hold to the box and they one whiff of that and they just were not interested they just didn't go in I found that quite inquis you know I was really fascinated by that it's like well that's what I'm looking for I can't put a mouse trap in my RV because if I was to catch a mouse and killed it it would rot inside my RV and that's not cool I need to get them where they just don't like it. So I bought it. I went to Home Depot and you can buy, just go into where the mouse traps and all that stuff and you'll find packets of mint that you can put in your RV. And that stuff's potent, man. Uh, so you want to do it before you leave, if it would, especially for so storage. And I, uh, we did get a lot of mice in my storage area, which uh, uh, there's no food or anything to be found there, but uh, I think they found it a great place for nesting. Uh, Anyway, uh, we had to pull all our stuff out and wash it all down, which we needed to do anyway. And we put two packets of mints in, uh, mint in there. And it's like, you open that door, you go, woo. But, uh, yeah, so I got this RV that's very minty. 
And then we're going back in October to um, uh, use the RV uh, and take it over to Idaho. And uh, it will be interesting to see how well that worked. So for preventing, uh, especially I would, you know, in your storage areas and stuff, uh, put packets of mint in your RV. Uh, well, whether it's foolproof or not, I can't exactly say, but it's for preventative reasons and not like, especially if you're not in there a lot and you were using a mousetrap or something, you don't want a rotting corpse <laughs> sitting in your storage area. Uh, but you want to, you want to make it distasteful. And so, uh, uh, load, load that RV of yours up with mint and that stuff. It's not the kind of mint that you're kind of used to, like in candy bars and stuff. It's a, it's a strong smell. Uh, and apparently them critters just hate the smell of mint. Uh, that's why a lot of people put it in their gardens and stuff. So, uh, there you go. Um, mint is definitely the way to go. Um, it's very it's very affordable. Uh, you can get it in packets like they look like tea bags, and you can tie them up and hang them in different areas. Put them in under the sink or something like that. Uh, places where the, the little critters are getting in, and of course try to seal up all the holes you can in your RV. But it's pretty hard to find them all. Uh, though if they want to get in, they'll get in, and that's just how it is. Uh, but yeah, make it a terrible place for them to come where they're just irritated. Kind of like listening to rap music <laughs> or heavy metal uh, day in and day out it'll get under your nerves and that's hopefully mint will do that for you <laughs> for your rv keep them critters out one other uh, channel i wanted to do a shout out for was uh sweet travels uh like like room suite sweet travels uh they uh i think they're a fairly new channel uh uh, they're up in Washington, at least right now, at least the video I, I referred to is uh, they actually pull their uh, fifth wheel with a 18 wheeler and uh, also have a smart car on the back of it. So kind of interesting setup. Uh, they did uh, looks like they're hanging out in the, Was the southwest Washington, Oregon border, uh, which I've been in all those places and uh, uh, definitely pretty places. They found an interesting place to boondock along the Columbia. And, uh, you know, the one thing I always get a kick out of is I watch these shows and, and every one of them, uh, especially the full-timers, is they'll complain about an RV place that they get into and they hate their neighbors. Uh, they'll get one neighbor and then another neighbor will be noisy. And it's like, and it's like so you kind of wonder what... <laughs> um, you have the same problems whether you're traveling or you're in a, a, a one, you know, at least I guess the, the, the point would be is, yes, you could move. And if you don't like your neighbors or don't like your scenario, you could change it. Uh, but that gets old really quick. And so uh, it's definitely something uh, to keep in mind that the different RV parks, sometimes they pack you in really tight. Other places, uh, you know, if you don't like to be like that, uh, um you know, you, you you don't get too upset. <laughs> you just kind of keep moving around. If you're going to new areas, you're not going to know till you're literally at the RV park and realize this isn't for us. And so you got to be open-minded, try not to get upset and too judgmental. Um, if you travel more and in the future you come back to areas you liked, you'll know better next time. But uh, I just find it amazing how Oh, sometimes it almost seems judgmental when you watch some of these RV channels when uh, they get in RV parks and they act like they kind of, it's all about them and got to realize it's all about us. It's You're going to be around groups of people. And so you need to put that in your head that uh, no matter what you're doing, where, even if you're boondocking, you're going to have to deal with other folks and you're going to have to find a way to cope and coexist and uh, uh, sometimes uh, um, scenarios just won't be perfect a fire somebody might have a fire pit and their smokes going towards your their your RV it's not their fault that the smokes going that way and they're not breaking any rules and uh, anyway it's things like that is like you just gotta let it go <laughs> and uh, all of us have to face that all of us 
uh, you just shrug it off because the next day those people could be moving or next day you're moving. Uh, if you're staying at one place for a month or something, then uh, uh, yeah, it probably could get a little irritating. But at the same time, it's like where you're staying is not yours. It's not your property, not your home. And that's the thing you're giving up as a nomad. And so uh, a homeless nomad. <laughs> yes, homeless. <laughs> you guys can't be picky. <laughs> does uh, food for thought and things to think about but really fine channel check them out sweet travels uh and of course jan and uh dan and jen nevada is always a great show to watch uh they're very judgmental too <laughs> and that's what's fun to watch them <laughs> so uh uh i i don't know what to say on that kind of stuff other than to say uh guys be open-minded Realize you're going to deal with people. Uh, there's not a whole lot of places to go where you're just going to be alone and don't have to deal with people. If you're trying, I mean, uh, gosh, if you need to get away from Canada, you know, people so much, move to Canada up in uh, Alaska, maybe the Yukon, maybe, uh, you know, you, then you could really get away from people. Uh, you better hope you have a lot of solar panels. Well, well, I'm back here and uh, decided to watch, sometimes it's torturous, but I was watching uh, Living Free, uh, Free Living, Living Free, and uh, he's been around forever. He's kind of like some of, one of the original kind of people back uh, when YouTube was just starting out. The only thing that really drives me crazy about him is... Uh, he always lets his dog run around free, and you know that dog's leaving deposits everywhere. My question is, does he pick up after his puppy? And if he does, he should call me, and I'll send him a box of Ranger Rob poopy bags to try out. And uh, uh, just because uh, I, 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 I love people that let their dogs run out and that stuff, but keep an eye on them. If you see them do, uh, do their duty, do your best to pick it up because, you know, the next person should going to that campsite doesn't want to find those wonderful uh left behinds from your pup so <laughs> it's just every time i watch this show the dog's running free and then uh, getting into other people's camps and all that stuff and it's like keep your dog keep your dog you know to learn to stay with him is parameters but most of all pick up after your dog um that's my pet peeve, and that's why I created the Range Rob Poopy Bags. But all I mean, he's got a good channel. He's definitely nomadic. Uh, he's definitely homeless. <laughs> and that's what this show's all about. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, living free, check him out. So, uh, changing the subject a little bit, uh, probably quite a bit, is to explain why we changed the channel itself. Not RV Talk Radio, it's the same. To Ranger Rob. And it was like, uh, because we're doing so many different things, I needed to kind of bring the brand in. So once I got the trademark and I now own the, the trademark Ranger Rob, I felt like now I uh, I have uh, the opportunity to use it the way I want. So uh, uh, when I use it beyond the Ranger Rob poopy bags, um, I give permission, written permission on uh, the different channels I have that Cutting Edge uh, uh, enterprises which owns it i own that um gives permission to use it in the other things because i have so many other things i do <laughs> and one of them is cooking with ranger rob and uh so uh, anyway, i had all this stuff and so what i'm trying to do is call it consolidate the name um but uh make the different subjects separate so I created a, a cooking with Ranger Rob because I do a lot of Traeger and now we're getting ready to buy it. By the way, I'm going to get one of those Blackstones. I <laughs> can't wait. Uh, I'm really starting to enjoy cooking. And uh, anything we do uh, uh, produce as far as cooking is applicable to uh, if you have a little grill or anything like that. Uh, some people have Traegers uh, with their uh, RV. Uh, you can do these recipes. <clears throat> so I, I highly recommend you check out Cooking with Ranger Rob. You'll enjoy that. Anyway, so we decided to go ahead and go from the Outdoor Travel Channel, which is still a playlist on this channel, and uh, and we still post towards it. 
Uh, and there's a separate website for Outdoor Travel Channel. There's one for RV Travel Buddy, which I own the trademark on that too. Uh, RV Travel Quest and uh, all that stuff. Because we will be traveling again. And so we will uh, 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 be utilizing those channels. But the main channel is going to just be called Ranger Rob. And uh, uh, and then all of our merchandise and all that stuff, like hats and logos and all that stuff, uh, can be consolidated under that name. So uh, I hope that kind of makes sense to you a little bit. Um, and that's a, just an old nickname that people gave me back in my hunting and fishing days uh, on the radio. They used because I was always coordinating fishing trips and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, the guys used to tease me as a, a Ranger Rob. So I bought the domain back in. I don't know, like 2005 or something like 2006. And I've owned it ever since. And then when we created the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, I felt it was necessary to create, a, uh, actually register the trademark. Uh, so, uh, and of course you'll see it's spelt with all the letters together, not separate. So it's Ranger Rob, all one word. <clears throat> so hope that explains it a little bit. <laughs> uh, and uh, you'll kind of see as time goes on how we'll consolidate everything together uh, so everything makes a little more sense and we can have some fun. Um, we're really expecting some bigger changes. We're calling in this null, and I can't kind of give away everything, but there's some changes for me and Sherry coming up that may cause us to do uh, some different changes that will cause us to rejuvenate all those different things that we've done in the past. So we're kind of in that mode right now where right now we're kind of sustaining. And uh, that's kind of all I can explain right now. But as time goes on, uh, we'll clarify a few of that things. But he's like, what's Rob and Sherry up to? Well, you know, we uh, you know we have the radio station, um, Good Talk Radio, which is all under Cutting Edge. And, and by the way, all this stuff we own is under is owned by Cutting Edge Enterprises, LLC. Anyway, but we also have Cutting Edge Radio Network, which controls all of our radio shows, including this one, RV Talk Radio. And what's cool about it is you can listen to RV Talk Radio on Good Talk Radio on weekends. And we also have Good Talk, uh, RV Talk Radio on Spreaker and iHeart Radio and a whole bunch of other places. And so the radio, um, some people will say, well, gosh, I look at your youtube and you're like only 50 or 100 people have listened to one of your shows and it's like uh guys that's not the one to look at it's how are we doing as a podcast and we're talking thousands there and so uh big difference so uh if you uh have our rv channel uh that you'd like us to review or like us to uh, uh interview you folks or something like that uh yeah well sometimes we don't get around to it as fast as we want to but uh there is some channels that uh, have shown interest of uh, uh, doing some live shows with us. And uh, those are always fun. We try to do live shows once in a while on Facebook. Then we record them and turn them into an audio. And, uh, but uh, we also put them on the YouTube channel as a live show. So they're kind of fun so you can kind of see the faces with the voices that you hear all the time. And uh, uh, yeah, and it's hard to keep up because... This is not the only thing I do, guys. I'm sorry, this is not the only... Uh, I have a bunch of other radio shows I do. I also have the Ranger Rob Rednecks Rule the World uh, DJ show I do for Good Talk Radio. That's kind of fun. But uh, yeah, if you ever get a chance to check out that, it's called uh, Ranger Rob Rednecks Rule the World. And we just the joke is, is like someday when all shit hits the fan, Rednecks will rule the world because we're the ones with all the skills. <laughs> So that's what that's all about. So you can see how the Ranger Rob name is getting kind of uh, moved around to different subject matters where we have a radio show, we have a cooking channel, uh, we have a product. Uh, so we thought we'd just consolidate the name under the, uh, it's like, okay, what's, what part of Ranger Rob do you want to enjoy cooking, uh, traveling, or do you want to enjoy uh, uh, our product, the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, which is a great product, guys. I really 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 suggest you give them a try go to amazon and uh give them a try and uh if you're traveling i wanted this is why i created those things is because i travel so much so many people didn't pick up and it's like sometimes it's you know don't depend on the park or don't depend on the dog park to supply your bags 
grab Ranger Rob poopy bags, keep them in your pocket, or get our distributor that you can connect to your leashes and get the rolls. And they're big, deep bags with handles that are strong and leak proof. And they're really good. And the reason I like them is because I used to have a hard time finding bags with handles. Well, that's not the case anymore. You can go to Amazon and get our product. And uh, you'll like them. They're affordable. They're not expensive at all. And uh, you'll like them. You will like the Ranger Rob Poopy Bags if you try them out. So, guys, uh, go to Amazon. Type in Ranger Rob Poopy Bags. Get, get, at least try a box. You're helping us. You're helping the channels. You're helping the the YouTube channel, you're helping the um, D-Day channel, you're helping the cooking, and have some fun with us and uh, and get a good product. So, uh, yeah, something that's original, something that we created, something that we're very proud of. Boy, I tell you, it's a sad situation here for us, me and Sherry. <laughs> so while you guys are all out there having a blast, driving around, being nomadic, you homeless people, you. And uh, Sherry and I are kind of trapped. And, and the problem is, is we're in Arizona and this is our winter time. So while you guys get the last laugh, but we, we actually will get the last laugh later because we get better. We have great weather for like nine months. But right now, man, you can't imagine what it's like to live in a place that's 105, 110 every day. Uh, you go outside to do anything. And you're just dripping. Uh, it's hard. And, and I think it's harder on folks that are a little older like us <clears throat> than young folks. And, and yeah, I mean, you still can kind of do things and stuff, but you have to be careful. Look, uh, stay in the shade. The sun's very intense. We've got to watch ourselves. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's not much fun. And so it gets kind of, oh, depressing a little bit for us folks here in the uh, – the Phoenix area uh, and other states too that have this really hot weather this time of year. Uh, but we know that we're just a month away where it starts dropping into the 90s and the 80s, and it'll be that way all the way around till spring. And then and it's it's wonderful, but man, for three months it's uh, you can't imagine what it's like. And uh, I remember we came down here in our fifth wheel, and uh, Sherry uh, got employed, and it was before we bought a house. We had to run three air conditioners to keep the RV cool. Uh, I was so worried that the two air conditioners that we already had in our Montana, uh, they're running constantly. <clears throat> so I finally got a portable one and piped it out one of the windows. And uh, I liked it because I also ran off a of 110 and uh, ran that in the RV. And uh, just to relieve the air conditioners a little bit, we we're working them so hard all summer. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, that's how hot it is. Um, and what's really bad is you can't really even take your pet out um, unless you put boots on them. And uh, so even Cinder, our <laughs> dog's a little depressed, like, uh, how come we're not going for road trips? How come we're not going for walks? How come we're not going to the park? It's really, it's just too dang hot. So the funnest, you know, the thing, so we all sit around and, Go to restaurants, eat out too much. Go to casinos, eat out too much, and just get fat and ugly. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's you just go. You do everything that's air conditioned. Uh, go watch a movie, whatever. Go shopping, whatever. Um, even the cook outside is hot. It's just really hot. Uh, when I do stuff on the Traeger, it's like, ugh. You open up the trigger and that heat comes out along with the 110 degree weather. You're dying. It's, it's hot. So uh, this is my this is my time to rant. <laughs> I'm just ranting about Arizona hot weather. However, it's uh, when I'm doing this show. It's actually the end, almost the end uh, of August, and uh, September is coming in, and we should start cooling down. But been kind of sad. We have a really low monsoon season this year. That's kind of weird. And uh, uh, the good thing about not having too many monsoons is, of course, when you get a lot of rain, it makes all that undergrass and grass and stuff like that grow, which uh, causes, uh, and then it dies, it causes a fire danger in all the uh, desert areas uh, in the fall. So, 
That's probably a good thing we didn't get too much water because um, the undergrowth would just go nuts. But uh, it's hot. It's real hot. And you can laugh at me now, but I'll get the I'll laugh later. But right now it's just uh, we're not getting a whole lot done. I, I mean, there's like little things like to go do something on your work on your vehicle or something like that. It's too hot. It's just too hot. And really the only time to do things uh, uh, if you really need to get things done is the early in the morning or late at night. And uh, even that at nighttime, can you imagine 90, 95 degrees, 100? It's amazing. But uh, short lived. But uh, yeah, so there's my rant. <laughs> Arizona hot weather. Ah! Well, just to take this to another level, I uh, was watching um, Living Free uh, a little farther, and he had actually a rant that he had, and I thought it was a really good thing to bring up. And he was speaking about why people, and it seems like it's a trend, are doing all this RV stuff, but not enjoying the surroundings or not they're just sitting in their rvs all the time and i thought i'd play his uh his uh little rant and uh love to hear your opinion on it so this is from living free and i'll put a link to his uh, uh video in our description i kind of noticed something lately that i kind of want to talk about but you guys don't need to stare at my ugly face in order to uh listen Let's stare at this beautiful scenery out here. Anyways, I've, for, I don't know, years now, I've kind of noticed a trend. And I want to talk about that. I want to kind of rant a little bit about it, <laughs> to be honest. I have been to many, as you guys know, I've been to many, many campsites in the last six years as I've been sharing my life and stuff. And I've noticed something that really bothers me. Um, and that is a lot of these campsites that I go to with RVs everywhere or vans or whatever. I notice that a lot of the people spend the majority of their time in their RVs. I mean, why go out to a beautiful, why, first of all, why spend all your money on an RV? Why drive out to a beautiful location and then just sit in your RV all the time? It doesn't make any sense to me. I bet you if I get up right now. I bet you those people are not sitting outside. Nope, they're not. Bet you, uh, yeah, none of those people that I see are sitting outside. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it gets, I mean, I shouldn't bitch about the way that other people live. They can, they can do whatever they want, but, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. I would like for some of you guys to add your thoughts on why you think people would do that. Go through all the trouble, spend all the money to drive your RV across the country to the most beautiful locations in the US and then sit in your RV staring at a TV or phone or something. It's like, it's so stupid, it's like modern art to me. It's like scribble on canvas and that people actually enjoy. I don't know, it's just, it's, it's really frustrating. So yeah, that was uh, uh, Living Free. I think his name's Mike, I, I don't know him that well. And uh, his uh, YouTube channel is uh, uh, free to uh, quote from. Anyway, and he wanted people's opinions on that. Have you noticed, or are you doing it as a full-timer or even part-timer, going into nice places and stuff and literally sitting in your RV the whole time? Now, granted, some of you are probably working on projects or maybe doing uh, editing and stuff like that, but his point is, is like, why are you going to all these beautiful places and not enjoying it? And why... Why sit inside your small little 400 square foot, <laughs> plus or minus, uh, RV when you could be sitting outside or uh, soaking it in, uh, saying hello to the neighbors or whatever? Um, of course, I mean, you're not going to be out there all the time, but uh, I've, I've noticed that trend too. It's like I've seen people that move in and it's like I never see them come out of their RV. 
Well, occasionally you'll hear them for a minute, close the door, get in their car and go somewhere, and that's good. Uh, and then they come back and you find out they just went to the grocery store. <laughs> it's like, what, what are they RVing for? Just to live differently and beat the beat the <laughs> system or or why why aren't they enjoying where they're located and where they're at why aren't they outside and soaking in the fresh air or soaking in the uh, atmosphere around them or uh, the community I'd love to hear your opinions on that and Mike had a uh, a great point there and he says it's happening it seems like it's happening more um, it's like the new generational kind of RVers are, uh, not out. I don't know if they actually understand why they're even out there in the first place. So some people definitely get it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the other thing, another thing Mike had in that video, and I do have a link down below for that video. He was talking about mice too. He was having trouble with mice. And it's like people will say, well, don't kill them. <laughs> it's like, uh, so he quit doing any videos showing how he caught mice and stuff like that. But uh, uh, the thing is, is like, if you caught a mouse, let him go. He'd come right back. And, and they, uh, they're like a plague. <laughs> they just keep coming and coming. So you you really got to, you got to stop the source. And so I, uh, uh, I agree with Mike. Is like it's kind of funny how you get those people saying, "Oh, don't kill them," but uh, for every one mouse, and then they have babies. There's another twenty, and then <laughs> there's another forty, and they multiply like rabbits. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know. But Mike, uh, every once in a while, I catch him. He has some interesting comments and things, and he's been doing this, like I said, since the beginning. He was like one of the first handful of guys that were that were nomadic wanderers homeless um doing videos him and uh, a couple other i can't remember all their names and nomadic fanatic was kind of new and they were all kind of trying to get their get their footing and figure out their niche and uh, uh i've done well through the years and of course uh, things were a lot easier on youtube back then so uh, uh, of course they're feeling the effects of the changes of youtube uh now and of course the YouTube is saturated, saturated, saturated with uh, uh, YouTubers now that are RV nomads or travelers, so including us. So, uh, and of course, those kind of people inspired us to do what we're doing today. So, uh, hats off to them. They were kind of like the uh, grandfathered in kind of people. So, uh, uh, Mike's, I mean, we're definitely a different generation and stuff, but. Um, I commend him. He's been consistent in what he's doing. Occasionally got in trouble. Occasionally got people upset with him. But all in all, he means well. And just like Nomadic Fanatic, they uh, they have their niche and they uh, uh, have their unique abilities to show what they're up to and showing their lives every day. And, and of course, when you expose yourself like this, even with like us doing this radio show, I get people that you know uh, definitely attack. But uh, you got to remember, this is just a show, so sometimes we bring up things that might be a little stimulating, not necessarily what we truly believe personally, but I uh, uh, love to hear the feedback of the different things like we were talking earlier on this show about being a nomad and being homeless. Um, it's just interesting how it's defined and how people are trying to define it. It's like... Uh, uh, the word is the word. The word means what it means. And so uh, uh, if you don't have a residence, don't have a base, you're homeless. <laughs> and if you're a wanderer moving around from point to point, you're a nomad. So, uh, yeah, you gypsies, you, you crazy people. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to thank Mike for uh, uh, his great rant there. I hope that kind of uh, inspires you guys to go over to his channel and subscribe. He's a different sort. And really, guys, it's really good to hear different kinds of people and generations of this subject and other subjects, too. 
And unfortunately, I my little rant here too is too many uh, people are just saying, I don't want to hear it and want to shut you down. We need to get back to diversity and getting back to hearing everybody's opinions, even if we don't agree with it. And if you don't like it, you don't shut them down. You turn the channel. You don't have to listen to them. You don't have to watch a particular show. You don't have to uh, see a particular um, subject on your Facebook. You don't complain. You just stop watching it. That's all you do. And we're uh, this. The only rant I have about this generation is, is instead of uh, admiring everybody's opinions, they want to shut you down. And that's not good. Everybody's, uh, there could be, um, you know, I'm on the conservative side of things, but on the other side of the liberal kind of side of things, there's things to be heard. Just like there's these guys talking about socialism. I am so opposed to that. However, if you look at today's generation, you can see why some of the things they're talking about uh, because of schooling and the debt that they're in and stuff like that, that why they would want government to cover a lot of their expenses. Uh, no, I, I'm not. <laughs> it's just the fact is they have other opinions and you should hear them and uh, find out why they're thinking that way and uh, either to find a, a compromise or find a way like, well, we're really failing in a certain subject and now it's causing people to think a different way that really is not healthy for the for uh, our nation. <clears throat> And the same thing with RVing. Mike brought up a good thing. Why are you RVing if you're not leaving your RV? Isn't that what it's all about? Recreational vehicle? Go recreate. Are you guys recreating out there? Well, full-timers may not look at it as recreation. That's their home, even though they're homeless. <laughs> so they just want to spend time in their home, I guess. But it's awful tight quarters. They not want to walk outside the door and soak it in a little bit so anyway guys hey i want to thank you very much everyone for listening to rv talk radio we had some great channels to review today please go down to the description and uh, check out these channels and make sure you subscribe to them uh, please take the time to purchase some ranger rob poopy bags to help our channel go to amazon ranger rob poopy bags you'll love them i promise you and uh, if you have a channel that you'd like us to review or like to uh, be interviewed uh, we'd love to have you, and uh, we'll find a way to work it out. Um, we're uh, not real hardcore, and so sometimes we need to get a fire under our ass to get a show going, but uh, we do want to hear from you. So anyway, guys, I'm Rob. Thank you for listening. This is RV Talk Radio. Till next time, be safe and buy yourself an RV. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.